I have officially been crocheting for a whole year now. So I'm gonna show you everything that I've made so far. So this isn't gonna be in complete chronological order, but I am gonna start somewhat, you know, from beginning, middle-ish to most recent. Um, but so from the beginning, this was the very first thing that I ever crocheted. It's just a simple tote bag. And honestly, I think it turned out really good. And it's so sturdy, like it's very strong. I can hold, I can put a lot of stuff in here and it, it's held up really well. So for this tote bag, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of knew the base, some basic crochet stitches. And I was like, I'm gonna make a bag. I'm just gonna make a long rectangle and then fold it in half and then add some straps. And that's what I did. So this is like, there's no seam back here where I've sewed it together. It's just like, this is where I started. Kept going, kept going, kept going, folded it in half, kept going, kept going, kept going, and boom. Even though there were some parts that I messed up on, it still turned out okay. I think I improvised it pretty well and made it look good because at some point, now this was my first, this was my very first crochet project. So I didn't totally know what I was doing. And there were parts of it where it started off in a rectangle and then it went outwards and then it went back inwards. And I didn't know what I was doing. So when I folded it in half, those parts that like stuck out like that, I just folded them over and just sewed it up straight. So, but it worked. I didn't know what I was doing, but it worked. And this might be one of my favorite things I've ever made because it's the first thing I ever made, but also it actually turned out really good. And it's very sturdy and I really like this tote bag. All right, my face is a little bit red now because I was poking at my eye trying to get that mascara out of my eyeball. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna have to just insert a picture of the next thing I made because I it's in my closet right now and I didn't feel like getting it all out and everything. Most of my other things I just had out already. So I didn't wanna, anyway, uh, I made a really cute halter top. Um, it was just, a, I just followed a very simple YouTube tutorial for, it was basically just a bunch of, it was either single crochet or half double crochet, like in a row and you go up and then you just decrease, make a triangle and stop and add straps and boom. It was very open back um, and it was pretty cute. That one didn't take me as long to make. This, the first thing I made, this tote bag, took me like a couple months to make, mainly because um, I kept running out of yarn and having to wait and go buy more. So that was the reason why it took me so long to make it. Um, and so I kind of was also working on this halter top in between while working on this. So even though I say this is the first one, my first thing I ever crocheted, because I started this first, but then I started the halter top and I actually finished that one before I finished this one, just because I kept having to wait on yarn. But I still say this was the first one just because I started this one first and was still making it as the, at the same time as the halter top. So it is what it is. Those are the first two things I made and I'm pretty happy with them. I only wore that halter top once though. <laughs> These next couple of things are a little bit out of order, but uh, I want to stick with the clothing and accessories part right now because I only have a couple more clothing and accessories and then all the rest of them are plushies that I've made. So next thing I made, we'll just go ahead and keep going with tote bags. Um, I just made these two big granny squares and sewed them together and made a tote bag. Now this one, honestly, I really think this is adorable. I think it's so cute. But since it's a granny square and like it's so open, it makes it a lot less sturdy. As you can see, this one, sturdy and thick and like close stitches together. Like this is really thick and can hold a lot of stuff. But this one, uh, I can't put very many things in it. Just, be I mean, I can, like I can fit in there, but then it gets all like saggy and droopy and weird and it just doesn't hold up that great. But that's okay, because I still think it's really cute. And I can put some, you know, simple, small stuff in it. Uh, recently, I put, I guess I'll move on to the next one, because the next thing that I was working on, um, I would put in here as I'm, like, traveling in the car, and uh, would work on it. Last tote bag. Now, this one is still a work in progress. I have not finished it yet. But if any of you have seen Plarn, where you just make yarn out of plastic bags. This is, this 
this has come unraveled a lot and it's like partially tangled, but it's okay. This is the next thing that I have started making. Um, it's a tote bag out, I'm making a bag out of plastic bags that I have recycled. So it's basically gonna be just like a sturdy tote bag. Now this one is going to be similar. It's gonna look, where do I go, where do I go? Similar to this tote bag where it's kind of just like, like a plain tote bag with solid thick straps. Um, but I'm not making it the same way. As you can see, I've, I'm, this is the bottom of the bag and I've already gone up on both sides because I learned how to do that. Um, where you just start with a chain and then at the ends, you uh, just increase on the corners and you just like keep going in a circle. So I'm just crocheting around. So each row is making the bag taller. So that way I don't have to do that whole shebang of like folding it in half and whatnot with that. So yeah. All right, this next thing that I'm about to show is kind of a fail. This is what I'm the least proud of, of my, well, one of my least prouder moments of crocheting. Um, so I started making this in December. Um, I started crocheting in, G not January, June or July over the summer, making these tote bags and the halter top. And then Christmas time came around and I wanted to make a Christmas sweater. And you might think like, okay, eh, it's okay. It just doesn't look bad, but like it's, look at this. Look at that. There's so many loose bits. This was actually, I think, technically the third thing that I ever made. And I still didn't fully know what I was doing. And um, so I started this in December and I did not finish it. Even technically, I still don't think it's really finished because I really need to go back and fix some things like this, but we'll call it finished for now. Um, I started it in December and I did not finish it until April of this year. So five months of working on this, this cardigan. Um, I'll try it on just for show. And maybe I, I probably will remake it one day. Ignore my shirt. It doesn't match with this, but it's just like a simple, here's the ribbing. And at first I made the sleeves way too long, which they still are kind of long, but, and I wish they were more bunched up. So it was more like puffy rather than just being so loose like this. But hey, I mean, not too bad for the third thing I ever crocheted. Um, but all of these little squares, they're just little squares of double crochets or no, half double crochets. And it took forever because I had to make all the squares, which wasn't that bad, but sewing them all together took absolutely forever. And the way that I first started sewing them together was with the, called either like the invisible stitch or the mattress stitch something like that where it's supposed to look invisible and seamless and it does but it was like not sturdy at all so basically since the invisible mattress stitch um, was not very sturdy I had to go redo all of them this piece of hair why is it curled like that why is it curling up like that I don't like that I need to go redo my hair. I want to curl the other way. I want all the U.S. curled up like that. My hair is just doing its own thing. It's just doing whatever it wants to do. Okay. I should have taken my straightener and curled these pieces, but I did not feel like it. Maybe I'll go do that now, though. Okay. Hmm. I just fixed them up a little bit. I think they look better. Yeah. Back to... The cardigan since it started like kind of falling apart it was not very sturdy uh, I ended up having to re-sew them all together which I still obviously haven't finished sewing them back the correct way um, and I basically just sewed them together with a single crochet like this and I'm just doing it on the inside so you don't see it also I learned how to do this type of ribbing where instead of making the ribbing completely separate and then having to attach it, you, you can attach it to the thing as you're working on it. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Learning new things. Okay, this is the last accessory thing that I have made. And it's this simple, cute little bucket hat. Now, the way that it's made, I do think is very adorable and very cute, and I love it. But I made it way too big on me. 
because <laughs> um, whatever type of yarn the maker of the pattern used for that pattern was probably different than what I did. It's probably either like smaller or I don't know. So I don't know, but basically like it's really loose. It's too big on me, but it's so cute. And for this one, another thing I kind of experimented a little bit with, ooh, I saw a way to like kind of block um, crochet projects and make them more stiff is to use, um, instead of just like spraying it with water, is to like basically paint it with like a half water, half glue mixture. And so that's what I did just for this top part to make it more firm. Because at first it, like look, you see when I'm holding it just with even just one finger holding it up like this, it still looks like top and bottom. But before it just kind of like drooped it just kind of drooped all the way down and looked so circular and I didn't like that. So I I just laid it flat and did that. And so now this top part is a lot um, sturdier and looks more like a hat. So maybe I will either give this to somebody or sell it to someone who has a bigger head than me um, so that they can get more use out of it than I can. One thing I have thought about doing though is making a little strap to like attach on like the insides on the sides that I can like adjust and like tie under my chin so it doesn't fall off. I don't know. I'm probably not gonna end up doing that though, but I am gonna make another one of these that actually fits me. Now I'm gonna get into the crochet plushies. So these are some of the first ones I made. This one I actually made recently and I accidentally sewed the spine on crooked. Oh well, it's still cute. This one was the very first one that I made and I didn't like double up the yarn or anything, but I already knew that with making plushies, you want you typically want to size down on your hook size. And so that's what I did. I went two sizes down. I think this yarn said it was recommended to use a nine millimeter crochet hook. And I used a seven and it turned out this big and still like kind of open. Then again, this was my first plushie I made. So obviously my like tension wasn't super great and there were quite a bit of mess ups. Cause like, also look at this, I sewed Somehow this little end keeps popping out um, and I sewed the tail on so crooked. Um, like, I did not know what I was doing. I sewed the tail on completely crooked and then going from that, that also made the spine crooked because I lined it up with the tail. And um, yeah, but it's okay. He's special. He's my, he's, he's my first ever plushie I made and he's, I still think he's cute. So, um, so yeah, and he's also the biggest because I used a bigger crochet hook and um, my tension was not very great. So um, yeah, but then I tried again and the second one I made, which is this one, so cute. Uh, for this one, I used a five millimeter one and obviously big size difference. Um, you see how much closer the stitches are together? Um, this one I also used a five millimeter. They're about the same. So cute. And I did end up making one other one of these that I sold to somebody with a seven millimeter one because she wanted it to be a little bigger like this one. And uh, even though it was bigger than these, but it was also kind of like an in-between of these two sizes. Like closer to this one, but still it was like a little bit smaller than this because um, I guess, you know, crocheting for a while I get better at like tension and keeping it all the same tension throughout my project so it, it didn't end up being super loose and flimsy like this one. Here are a couple other crochet dinos that I've made and this is the same pattern as those but these ones I just did with some uh medium four weight yarn instead of the chunky yarn and they're so they're so cute and tiny I love them they're so tiny. But yeah, and I also did make a couple other the, of these size ones that I sold to somebody. I think I'm just gonna keep going with some of the small things and then get to the bigger ones. So the next things that I made, uh, oh shoot, hold on. Uh, I wanted to make some little octopuses and I did follow a YouTube tutorial to make an octopus once, but I don't know where it is. And I didn't finish it, it doesn't have eyes. So, because back then I didn't have the plush eyes like this. So it doesn't have eyes. But anyway, I found this one pattern on Ribbler. 
Actually, a lot of these patterns are from Ribbler. Ribbler. For an octopus. And I'm like, honestly, on camera, this looks... I feel like this looks better on camera than it does in person. Like, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of this one. I just feel like he just kind of looks like a ball rather than an octopus, you know? Like, he, yeah, he has his little eight nubs for his legs. But I don't know. Like, he's cute, but wasn't totally what I was going for. So then I found another one that looks so much more like an octopus. And, like, the legs... I just, I like this one a lot better. So I actually made three of these. <laughs> I've made three of them so far. And I just think they're really cute. So um, I'm going to try and start selling these too. But everybody loves the little dinosaurs. Which makes sense. There are, they are freaking adorable. But um, I want to sell some other stuff too. So here's some little octopuses. Um, next thing I made. I don't know why I keep saying next thing. Because like I'm not going in a particular order. I'm just grabbing things. <laughs> but I made a cute little stingray. This was so cute. And I still have some blue yarn left. I actually have a couple of things of white yarn and I really wanna make a shark. So I think I might actually make that next. Um, but yeah, and then I put a, a little piece of pipe cleaner in, uh, in the tail, cause that's what it said to do if you wanna make the tail curved. And I was like, that's so smart. Like now I actually have something that I can use my pipe cleaners for. All right, this next thing, I meant to finish this before I started filming, but then I forgot because I've been procrastinating finishing this one. It's almost done. This one is more, uh, another kind of fail. Um, I found this cow pattern on Ribbler, which looks really cute on the things, but I, well, one, I think I sewed this, this thing on so weird. Like it's like drooping down instead of being like, I don't know it's it's kind of weird looking and then also i i don't think i made these ears right because they like they just don't look right i don't know i don't know what's wrong with them this one looks like okay this one what is up with this one i don't know why this one turned out like bigger and i don't know but then also when i sewed it on i sewed it on too high they're not they're not even <laughs> that's why this one's kind of a fail and i still need to sew his spots on and his other horn <laughs> That's, that's what I meant to do, and then I, I forgot. I, I, I wanted to test this one out, because um, at the time, I was going to make it with black and white of my chunky yarn, but my white yarn was thinner and was not the same size. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to wait. And then I did it with some acrylic yarn of two different colors of yellow, and I just don't think this looks as great in acrylic yarn, but that's okay. I am going to remake this pattern one day and make it look good, because I know I can't. I just totally messed up on this one. But that's okay. All right, we're down to the last three plushies. So I wanted to make a bee. And look how freaking big he is. Oh my goodness. I wanted to make a smaller bee, like half this size. And he turned out so big. This is the Ribbler bee pattern on Ribbler. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan. Not a huge fan of it. Just cause like, it's so ginormous. And also, I don't like the wings. That's the main reason why I'm not a fan of this is because I don't like the wings. These wings are just not it. I just don't like them. So I need to find a, a different pattern for that. But anyway, he's still like kind of cute. He's just so big, so big. Yeah, I wanna make some smaller bees though. This cute little snake. Now it was supposed to be longer than this, but as, as you can see, I was alternating between green and yellow, and then I ran out of yellow. So I had to stop it short. <laughs> um, but he's still a cute snake. I found this pattern on Pinterest, and he's so cute. So yeah. Okay. Last, but most certainly not least, because this might be my favorite thing. Actually, it's probably my favorite plushie I have made. Ready? It's a triceratops. A strawberry triceratops. She's so cute. Now, I have seen the traditional like strawberry triceratops where you do it like pink and then like the red strawberries and stuff. But I only had this kind of pink at the time. Now I did go buy more yarn, so I am gonna make another one of these in just pink and red. Um, but I was like, one, yellow is my favorite color. So I really wanted to make a yellow one and I was like, I'll do yellow and pink and have it be strawberry lemonade. And so I think that's cute. Now this one technically is done. And I've been done with it for a while. But I forgot to sew on the toenails, like with the white. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just haven't gotten to that. And I don't know if I ever will because uh, it's just kind of a nuisance that I don't want to do. I don't want to sew on the toenails. That is 
pretty much all of my crochet stuff. These are all of the things that I have made uh, within this first year of me crocheting. Um, and I have sold a couple things, but I mainly have been doing this just as a hobby for myself. And eventually I would like to learn how to make patterns. I haven't had the, really that much of a desire to learn how to make a pattern yet because I just, I have find so many free patterns that I want to do. Like this was a free pattern, this was a free pattern, this was a free pattern. All of these were free patterns. So <laughs> um, that's why I haven't really made my own pattern yet because I, I haven't really needed to. But I think maybe I will make my own pattern for a bee since I don't really like that bee pattern. I don't know. Basically, I need to find something that I want to make, but can't find a pattern that I like. And then I'll just make it myself, you know? But I feel like that's gonna be a lot of trial and error and a very long process. So, I don't know. We'll see, maybe I will make patterns. And even though crocheting really is mainly like my hobby, really just is really just a hobby uh, that I like to do all the time, I do, you know, I would like to like sell some stuff and especially because like I love making these plushies but like I don't need to keep all of them but I am making some plushies for some friends and whatnot and I also am uh, kind of selling some here and there but as I keep crocheting and making more stuff and learning how to make patterns I could also start selling patterns and just just whatever you know so